So the lead changes. So uh, what I would say the majority of it would be my, think of your headlight on your sternum. So now when I work my sternum and my focus, I want you to think about your focus. So if I start to look to the left, I'm gonna, I can get him to bring his left ear back. If I start to think about the right, I'll get that right ear back because he's, what he's doing is he's using his right eye. So what I start to do is I start to ride, I ride the mind of the horse too. So, but I think when you think of riding the mind, think of riding their eyes and their ears. If I go forward and I look straight on, his ears go forward. It's not a fluke, you're causing that. So I could ride his ears back. If I'm backing up, I could ride his ears backwards. If I'm going forward, I could ride those ears up. There, that's not a fluke. That's not a fluke. So I'll ride those ears up. Now I'll get those ears to come back on me before I bring them down in his gait. So ready, I'll squeeze and release my reins. There's those ears. So a lead change. Well, what I would do first is get really clear on direction and him following my focus. So if I look to the right, lift my sternum, shine my headlight, he starts to follow that. And then I might bring him back. And then I might look to the left. And can I get him to look to the left? Or maybe I start, I mean, I could do turns on hindquarters, you name it. But the idea is I get him to follow that headlight on my chest. So at some point, what I do is I start to show him, we're, yeah, we're changing direction. Get ready. So, so I turn that headlight and I might even set it up where I sort of squeeze release those reins. There we go. And so most of that is coming from my headlight, but yes, my outside leg might come back, my inside leg might come forward, but most of it is coming from my eyes, my focus, my chest. In German, there's a, the Germans have the greatest words sometimes because one German word can be like our, in English, like sentence. And so one of the words in German they have is called Kreutz aids. And the Kreutz aids means lower back, the rider's lower back, seat, and weight. So the Kreutz aids, they also are known as the invisible aids, which is interesting, right? So if you think about this, if I use my hands, do you see me use my hands? Yes. If I use my leg, you're going to see me use my leg. But if it's coming from my center, from my Kreutz aids, you're not going to see me as much. I mean, you might, but if I halt, I'm doing it here. If I walk, it's here. I'm using my leg a little. But the idea there is if I get a horse really tuned into my Kreutz aids, my seat, where do I put my weight? Where do I put my seat? And I get him tuned into my focus, pretty soon he gets clear and lead changes get much, much easier. So I'm kind of giving you my version of what I stress in a lead change. There's a little more to it. You might be thinking about simple changes. Now for something like that, for a simple change, you might just think of this. Following my focus, I'm riding his ears, getting his ears up. If I turn right, I'm going to get a right ear back. See? That right ear back, left ear forward. So then what I might do is I might think of sitting up. I squeeze my, in my seat, believe it or not. Squeeze, release my seat, my abdomen. Pretend like you're going to have a soccer ball hit you in the stomach. And it's going to knock the wind right out of you and it's too late to move. So what we do is we squeeze the rein. We tighten our abdomen and our upper thigh. But I don't hold it. It's something like this. Whoops. Guess we're going to be moving here at the canter. Good boy. We'll just trot though. So I think of this, I squeeze, release my reins, I set my elbows, my abdomen, and my seat, I squeeze, release, squeeze, release. I didn't hold it. Very important. If you hold, you're going you're gonna to facilitate resistance. He has to push back against you. But what I'll do is I'll squeeze, give, squeeze, give. This becomes a precursor to what we call half halt. How many of you have heard of a half halt? Yeah, cool. A half halt gets a horse ready to make a change. It's a mental and physical check back. So physically they sit back, mentally, uh, physically they sit back, mentally they check back. So before I make a change in gait, 
I might just slightly squeeze those body parts, squeeze, release, get some ready, and so pretty soon he goes, oh, I know a halt's coming. Now, before I walk, I might squeeze, release, but I lift my body this time. And I say, get ready, we're about to trot. Get ready, we're about to walk. Get ready, I'm going to squeeze the right rein in time with his right front leg coming back. Get ready, we're about to canter and walk. And left front leg, I'm gonna, as his left foreleg comes back, I can canter to part. And then before I bring him down in transition, I think of that half halt motion, and I bring him right back. So the, one of the reasons that it looks easy is because I'm getting him ready. So the half halt, I've heard it described as like bookends that hold up a stack of books on a bookshelf. And the, the, the half halt is like the bookends. Another way to say it is this. When you were a kid and you ran foot races, remember how they would say, ready, set, go. All right? Imagine if you were running a race and it was just go. And that's what we do to our horses so much of the time. So when we're making a transition, I want to say, ready, get set, go. Right? So a half halt is so cool because it's not just this thing that gets a horse to rebalance and sit back. It gets them mentally ready. So I hope, I hope that kind of made sense. Thanks for the question. And I do, a, I do sometimes a, a little too long of an answer. But anyway, any, <laughs> any other questions that, uh, or observations? Yeah, moving on to flying change. Uh, there's so much there. That's, there's so much to that. But knowing when your horse is really on the aids and soft, Knowing that a horse is, is really willingly forward off your seat, that they'll go forward, being able to stop a horse without a lot of rain or without the reins. Another thing to think about in classical dressage, this is a really good uh, sort of thing to think about. Can you go from any one gate to any other gate immediately? Now, I don't mean scared horse. I don't mean force, but I mean... Could we smoothly go from canter to halt, canter to walk, walk to, you name it. But can we go from any one gate to any other gate smoothly? If we have simple changes and we have halts in place, then it makes sense to start implementing like cavaletti, little jumps, natural terrain. So at our farm, we have some land. Sometimes I could go down or up a hill. And now that horse is naturally using himself to get up the hill. So it would be possible to ask in those places. But something about a, uh, a lead change to think about is there is a timing to it. And it's important that we don't throw our horses off balance because what will happen is you're going to end up getting a front and not the rear. The trick to a flying change is they're upright, they're balanced, they're between the reins and legs and you've got good hind quarter, I'm going to say control, but to be able to direct that hind end. It's very important. And how are we doing on time? So something to think about is the hind quarters. And think about the left hind leg here. So his left hind leg is driving the majority of this turn on forehand. That left hind leg is the power leg. All right, I'm going to work the right hind leg here. I'll show you a really, I feel it to be a really good exercise here. So I'm going to work the right hind leg. But he's, he's driving more with that right hind leg. Well, in the canter, the can we know that the canter is initiated with the outside hind leg. So if I can get him to be clear on what leg to power up with, I could use a turn on the forehand to power him up, to set him up, to set me up for my departure. Now, if I use the right hind leg and I say drive with the right hind leg, that is the initiating leg for a left lead. This is probably one of the best exercises I could tell you to do with a horse to get a nice canter transition. So I'm actually using, I'm actually using a turn on the forehand to power up a hind leg, which in this case is the right hind leg, to set the stage for a left lead. And what you're going to find is it naturally causes your horse to coil. Getting your horse to coil up is, is really the trick. 
Another thing to think about is we've talked about leg yielding, but if I take it a little bit further, I start to work like haunches in, and we would call that like rain ver traver. So I start to get good at working the haunches. Now, you might be working more of a leg yield, but I'm going to be working more where he's bending right, moving right, bending left, moving left. He wants to canter, see? Because what I'm doing is I'm getting him to coil. So I work on hindquarters to the inside, which also engages that right hind leg. So I've got his rump to the left, which means he's powering with his right hind. Well, if I can get his hindquarters into the right and power with his right hind leg, it'd be easy to canter a left lead. So in the lead change, I'm slightly moving that hindquarters in the direction of the new lead. But that's would really help to, uh, to take people a little further along with like walk to canter and even flying changes. But it's all about talking to that hind end. And remember the outside hind is what initiates the inside lead. One last thing on that. Here's the confusing part to that exercise. Because I, I, I teach this to a lot of people. Here's the confusing part to that exercise. When I take his hindquarters to the right, his left hind is his power leg. We depart on a right lead. So it is a little confusing in the sense that people are used to like moving the hindquarters this way and then they might take a left lead, but it's the other way around. We're really getting him, think about which leg is powering up. So if I can take his right hind under, well now it's underneath to go depart, see? So hopefully that makes, that makes sense. Any other questions or any other observations? Did you, did you all get something out of it today? Yeah, cool, appreciate it. Do you all have something you can go home and, and use and do? Yeah, good, very good. Well, what I want you all to think about is as trail riders, we need to be more tuned than those arena riders are, right? And we're only as good as we are as a team with our horse when we're under pressure. So to some extent, we do need to work with our horse's life.